One of the best YouTube comments I've received is from Big Blue Frontend on my CRT review. He said that the input lag in a good adaptive sync display can beat a CRT because, and I love the way he puts this, the CRT has to eat the VSync lag. And he's right. I suspect most of you watching this video already know that VSync introduces lag because you've experienced it for yourself. But I wanted to take some measurements, actually a lot of measurements, to show just how bad it gets. And it's bad. And then I'll talk about why adaptive sync and some clever frame rate capping can allow a modern LCD to display a frame faster than an analog CRT. But to do so, I'm going to have to hit you with a lot of data, so strap in. One way to capture the total chain input lag of any game slash monitor combination is to use a high-speed camera to capture a mouse click or button press, and then to count the frames until you see a change on the screen. That's what you're seeing now. But I imagine this process is incredibly tedious, so I've got to give credit to Joramt, the author of Blurbuster's G-Sync 101 guide, for taking what I'm sure was a very long time to give us these type of measurements back in 2017. But there are problems with using in-game animations such as muzzle flashes or strafes or jumps, because those may not always show up exactly on the next game tick. What you'd really want is a game that changes the screen's color immediately after a button press, all the time, every time. And that's exactly what I have with my super simple Unreal Engine input lag build. If I press B, the screen turns black. If I press W, the screen turns white. No animation, no delay. But I don't have to keep pressing B and W over and over again. I let the microcontroller do that for me, and it reads the light probe much faster than even a 1000 FPS camera. Here's what one particular result looks like. I call these waterfall plots, and you've probably seen them before in my other reviews. For today's testing, I'm only taking 32 samples for each measure, rather than my usual 1000, but 32 is enough to show the typical uniform distribution, and I'm looking for the first point where the response drops below the steady state high average. But back to Unreal. I also love UE4 for the amount of information and control available by using the developer console. You can show real-time FPS and frame time, internally limit the game's refresh rate, and even adjust the rendering resolution, which we will definitely talk about, but later. And UE4's engine stats overlay gives a treasure trove of information. But we need to start off with what I'm measuring and what I'm not measuring. This video won't cover VSync off because frankly, it's not that interesting. Without VSync, as soon as the GPU is done rendering its frame, the front and back buffers are swapped, even in the middle of a display scanout, so every frame will have tearing. But at least some portion of that scanout period will show the results of your latest mouse and keyboard inputs. As you've no doubt seen from my other videos, I often play Quake 2 on my Dell CRT at 1000 FPS VSync off. The immediacy of the response is exhilarating, and at 1000 FPS, the tearing isn't too noticeable. So if you want the best latency, you should just buy a CRT and play Quake 2. But what if you're not playing games from 1997? This was Big Blue Front End's point. With modern games running at more reasonable frame rates, CRTs need some type of frame sync to really show off their motion clarity. In the past, that was VSync with its terrible lag, but now, thanks to Unwinder, we also have RTSS's Scanline Sync, which is a just-in-time frame delivery control, which again, I'll get into soon. But adaptive sync displays don't have to use either of those. So now, onto what I am measuring. All measurements were taken on the Asus VG27AQ, a 165Hz screen with only 0.63 milliseconds of processing lag. And I've tested 13 different frame cap situations. Hang in there. First, pure VSync on. Then using Unreal to cap the frame rate to 165. Then, based on Blurbuster's G-Sync 101 guide, capping the frame rate to one frame below and then three frames below the max refresh. I then start implementing external frame rate limiters. NVIDIA's control panel now has a much better working FPS cap, so I use that with the same 165, 164, and 162 values. Also new for NVIDIA are the low latency and ultra low latency modes, LLM and ULLM. And finally, I use RTSS, another external frame rate limiter with the same three limits, 165, 164, and 162. But RTSS also has the scan line sync mode, so I test that as well. All right, so let's get on with the results. With only vSync enabled, the graphics driver first allows UE4 to fill the swap chain, but then it stalls Unreal's rendering thread until the front and back buffers are flipped for the next frame. This causes all our keyboard and mouse inputs to pile up in a queue, which is where this average lag of 27.5 milliseconds comes from. That's not terrible, but it's not good either. Let's take a quick look at where this average is coming from first. This box and whisker plot shows the spread of the 32 measurements I captured for this vSync situation. And you may notice that it looks a lot like a uniform distribution of points between 24.5 and 30.5 milliseconds, a difference of 6 milliseconds, 
which is one frame at 165 Hz. Depending on when my microcontroller sends the key press, I may get lucky and send it right before Unreal presents the frame to the graphics driver, or I may just miss that and have to wait a full display cycle, or it could be anywhere in between. This is where the average of 27.5 milliseconds is coming from. But let's get back to the chart. The first thing I wanted to look at was whether or not limiting the frame rate to 165, either with Unreal or any of the external limiters, had any effect on the input lag. Clearly, no. Don't worry about the decimal points here, these are all effectively the same. Now let's try Unreal's internal limiter at 164 and 162 FPS. This is where the good stuff happens. No longer are we being installed by the graphics driver, so the average lag drops down to a fantastic 6.5 milliseconds. And the very best measure came in at 3.7 milliseconds. Capping at 162 versus 164 made no difference. One good way to visualize why this is happening is to look at UE4's engine stats. When running vSync on, frame sync time shows how much time UE4 is spending synchronizing the game and rendering threads. This happens because the rendering thread is being stalled by the graphics driver. But as soon as I cap the frame rate to say 164, the frame sync time drops to zero, as the two are now running in concert. But suppose the game you're playing doesn't have an internal limiter. How well do external limiters do? Here we can see that both NVIDIA's control panel limiter and RTSS do very well considering, with only about one frame of additional lag at 165 Hz. Again, I found no significant difference between capping at one or three frames below the max. Next up is NVIDIA's low latency mode, or LLM. This is identical to the old set max queued frames to one option, but uh, it doesn't do anything for Unreal. Ultra low latency mode, ULLM, new since August last year, does do something. At 165 Hz, it's actually capping the frame rate to about 157, but it performs identically to the other external limiters. So why use ULLM if capping the frame rate works just as well? We'll get to that soon, I promise. And last but not least, RTSS's Scanline Sync mode, the CRT's best friend. Scanline Sync is great for fixed refresh rate screens like CRTs because it allows us to have a V-Sync off mode with the tear line intelligently steered off the screen. A good way to see this at work is to use RTSS's four bar frame indicator with the control shift up and down hotkeys. Scanline Sync for fixed refresh rate displays only has a moderate penalty above the external limiters for adaptive sync displays. We can now finally see Big Blue front end's point realized. To get smooth, tear-free motion on a CRT, we have to eat at least some lag penalty. Now let's run through the same measurements, but this time I set the VG27AQ's max refresh rate to 60 Hz. Note the change in the y-axis. The exact same pattern emerges, but now with everything just worse. The uncapped situations are all up to around 74 milliseconds of lag, and with a slower panel scan out, these start to feel unplayably laggy with mouse and keyboard. Even the external caps are all worse than the worst measurement taken at 165 Hz. Higher frame rates are better. Unreal's internal caps are still performing okay. We can now move on to an actual game to see if this pattern holds true generally. And this is one I think you'll be much more interested in, CSGO. When I first decided to measure Counter-Strike, I didn't know what action to test to measure the response. Should I jump or shoot or... I didn't think I could make the game instantly fall from white to black like my Unreal build. But then I realized the buy menu pops up and darkens the screen on the very next game tick after your input. Ha! Huh. Lucky me. All the testing was done on the St. Mark map, with every graphic setting turned down to potato mode. Let's take a look. For these charts, I've dropped the results from 13 down to 6, but that's only because every input lag stratum is represented by the results on screen now. At 165 Hz, CSGO's double buffered VSync performs only marginally worse than UE4, 30 versus 27 milliseconds. Triple buffering consistently performed worse. For UE4, its internal limit did nothing when set at 165 FPS, but curiously, CSGO gets most of the benefit of the 1 FPS below limit, even with FPS underscore max set at 165. 164 and 162 measure the same, even though the latter isn't represented here. 10.5 milliseconds is really quite good. But that doesn't extend to the external limiters. RTSS doesn't reduce lag at 165, but it does at 164. At around 15 milliseconds, RTSS and all the others, NVIDIA Control Panel Limit, ULLM, performed identically. And Scanline Sync stays consistent at around 17 milliseconds. It's much the same story at 60 Hz, but again, take note of the y-axis. With either vSync method, we're north of 85 milliseconds and the experience with mouse and keyboard is frustrating, to say the least. In this case, stick with FPS underscore max 59. The last game we're going to look at is EasyQuake. 
an OpenGL title that'll easily run at more than 1000 FPS. I had CSGO's buy menu on my mind when I decided to measure this, and sure enough, hitting escape brings up the menu on the very next frame, darkening the screen, which is great for me. I love these menus. The measurements on screen now follow pretty much the same pattern as the others, but take a look at EasyQuake's internal limit when set at 164. That average of 4.4 comes from a uniform distribution of responses between a top end of 7.3 milliseconds and a bottom end of only 1.4 milliseconds. If you want to try out a game with almost no latency, EasyQuake is your game. You could of course do better by running with VSync off at 1000 FPS, but then you get multiple tears on every frame. As for the external limiters, just like in the other games, NVIDIA's low latency mode is not doing any better than VSync. And ultra low latency mode only works on DX9 and DX11 games, so it's also doing nothing here. But one perplexing and kind of amazing thing is how well RTSS's external cap of 164 is doing. At 165Hz, the lag is almost identical to the internal cap, and it's only marginally slower at 60Hz. I don't know how Unwinder manages this, but kudos. All the measurements I've presented so far at 60Hz were taken with the VG27AQ limited to 60Hz in the NVIDIA control panel, and if you've noticed, I've put 60Hz max in yellow on the chart titles to indicate this. I go into more detail about this in my Acer KG271U review, but artificially limiting a head refresh rate monitor to 60Hz doesn't allow it to use its full scanout speed, so these lag results don't truly represent the latency you'd feel if you were playing a game that dipped to 60fps while using adaptive sync. So to measure this real latency, I went back to my Unreal build and used its internal limiter to measure the lag you'd feel throughout the VG27AQ's full variable refresh rate range. The two charts I'm showing here are really just two different ways to look at the same data. Starting with the bar graph on the left, as I use the t.maxfps console command to lower the frame rate, this chart shows only a moderate rise in lag, from 6.2 milliseconds average to 10.9. But notice the error bars are getting larger. A better way to look at these results is with the box and whisker plot on the right. Notice that at each frame rate limit, the lowest latency is the same. Back to earlier, that's when I got lucky and my key press happened right before Unreal sent the frame off to be rendered. But in a worst case, I just missed that submission and I have to wait a full display cycle to see something happen on screen. Look at the spread of each. At 164Hz, the spread is 6 milliseconds. At 144, it's 7 milliseconds. At 100Hz, 10 milliseconds. And at 60Hz, it's 16.7 milliseconds. So on average, input lag goes up when the frame rate goes down, but it's not as bad as you'd expect. Even as a huge CRT nerd, these results are truly impressive. Modern adaptive sync displays allow us to have smooth, stutter-free motion throughout a huge frame rate window, all with very little latency, something that was definitely not possible with fixed refresh rate displays like CRTs. The last thing I want to cover is something I first became aware of from Chris at Battle Nonsense. When NVIDIA released their ultra-low latency mode in the drivers, he tested and found that games have a dramatic increase in input lag when the GPU is at full utilization. UE4 has a neat little console option for setting the internal render resolution of the scene, R dot screen percent. You can change this from 1 all the way out to 400. Really low numbers obviously make the screen look like pixelated garbage, but this huge range of rendering resolutions allows me to adjust quite precisely the GPU load and then I can measure the input lag to check if Battle Nonsense's results hold true for Unreal as well. Every measure in the chart I'm showing now was taken when the screen was refreshing at 60Hz, either limited by the GPU or UE4's internal limiter. For the first result, I had to set the screen's render resolution at 230%, which caused my 1070 Ti to max out exactly at 60fps. This 100% GPU utilization caused the input lag to jump to 60 milliseconds from the 10.9 milliseconds I showed in the last slide on adaptive sync behavior. That measure is included in the chart as the 7% result. Dropping the screen percentage slightly, 230 down to 224, did nothing for the GPU use. The frame rate just got higher. So I used the console to limit the FPS back down to 60, and the GPU utilization fell to 95%. Allowing the GPU a little room to breathe gives us a huge drop in lag, from 60 milliseconds all the way down to 27. Further reductions to 90% or 80% and so on, down to 60%, have very slight decreases in input lag, but the very best results only come when the GPU is essentially doing nothing. The key here is to not let your GPU get to a point where it's constantly hitting max utilization. I promised earlier that I would get to ULLM and why you might want to use it. Turning off the frame rate cap and setting the render resolution back up to 230%, NVIDIA's ultra low latency mode does drop the input lag by more than a full 60Hz frame. I'm not quite sure it deserves the ultra moniker, but it does work, 
and unless there's some specific problem using it with the game you're playing, you may just want to set it globally to on. Okay, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope you found these results interesting, but I want to give a short list of recommendations if you're concerned about latency. First, buy a high refresh rate adaptive sync monitor, any adaptive sync monitor. Every monitor I've tested so far has had less than one millisecond of processing lag, so the differences there aren't going to matter. Second, vSync lag is real. You'll want to use vSync while in your monitor's adaptive sync range, but as soon as you hit that max frame rate, you'll incur an enormous lag penalty. Three, to stay below that max, internal game engine frame rate limiters are best. Set them at least one FPS below your max refresh rate. If the game you're playing doesn't have one, most external limiters perform essentially the same. And four, turn on Radeon Anti-Lag or NVIDIA's Ultra Low Latency Mode. Thanks for watching.